I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a logic choice question for the dad. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the author of the Dot Destroyer book and the creator of the Orbo Man products. I want to go over a new type of question that we have in the Math Destroyer and the ADA demands you to know it for the DAT exam. This question is not so easy and we want to work these questions out. Professor Blois is going to actually do it and you're going to see a whole bunch of these type of questions in our Math Destroyer book. So come along and let's take a look before we go to Professor Boyce. For these questions, we want to evaluate the given question and the two statements that follow it. Then we're going to choose one of the following. Letter A, statement one alone is sufficient, but not statement two. B, statement two alone is sufficient, but not statement one. Both statements one and two together are necessary and sufficient. And D, each statement alone is sufficient. Or E, statement one and two together are not sufficient. All right, Professor Blois, if you don't mind, can you make some sense out of this? Okay. Actually, this is Professor Blois. These problems are actually easier than they may appear on first blush. But you have to get familiar with the wording of this, the, the initial presentation. Once you're familiar with that, the actual doing of the problem is not that bad. Let's just take a look at this first problem. Here's the question. What is the value of x? Statement 1, you have an equation, x squared minus y squared equals 36, a hyperbola. Statement 2, y equals 4. I think you can see that taken on its own, x squared minus y squared is equals 36, it's not sufficient to answer the question. What's the value of x? There's two variables there, only one equation. All right, statement two makes a statement about y. That's not sufficient to answer the question about x. But notice, if we take the two statements together, y is equal to four, we plug that into the first statement, x squared minus four squared is 36. We need not even go into the details. We see that x is completely solvable. We'll get x squared equals some value and solve for x. So the answer to this is part C. Both statements, one and two together, are necessary and sufficient to answer the question, what is the value of x? Okay, let's move on to a second question here. What is the value of x? All right, let's see if we can answer Professor, this. Professor, that would be choice C. Is that correct for that one? A choice C, yes. Choice C, okay. Right. So now, uh, on to the second one. What is the value of x? Statement 1, we have an equation, x plus 2y is equal to 3. And statement 2, 6y equals 9 minus 3x. Well, just on principle, if we have two unknowns and two independent equations, the problem is totally solvable. So, if, just, uh, if we first look at this, our first blush, we say, oh yeah, two equations, two unknowns, we can solve for x, simple. But... There's a little twist to this problem. Let's look a little more carefully at statement two. Okay, let's rearrange statement two. Let's add three x to both sides of statement two. It becomes three x plus six y is equal to nine. Now let's divide both sides of this equation by three. What do we get? X plus two y is equal to three. Does that look familiar? It's the same as the first equation. So these are these are two equations, but they're not two independent equations. The second equation does not add any new information to the to the system of equations and therefore we cannot solve it. Our choice is E. Statements one and two together are not sufficient to answer the question. Well that's that's our choice here. Holy smokes, I think he might have got me on that question. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know about you guys, but um, I think he might have got me. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. You are yeah. very sneaky, Professor. I wanted to be sneaky because you can always confront this kind of a problem on the dash. All right, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did even watch with Professor Blois. It was much like when I was a student, the way he enchanted me when he was my professor way back in college. I'm enchanted now by you. You are amazing. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.